In this video, this man is seen battering one of the women, Barbara Nalwoza, who is demanding a refund of her money in the far-flung city of Dubai, United Arab Emirates. In 2015, Nalwoza wore the green of a lottery winner when she departed for Dubai to escape the apathy of unemployment in Uganda. With its towering buildings and elegant roads, Dubai offered the allure of a well-paying job with several parks. However, Nalwoza had spiritedly thrown herself into the clutches of a human trafficking cartel. So um, Atamba took me to um, Ali Al-Jaba's office. I met with Ali Al-Jaba and he told me there was a, a job for uh, Etisalat Telecommunication. And Etisalat Telecommunication being one of the big leading telecommunications in UAE. So he told me, though we needed to pay for our, our own visas, and that's about 8,000 dirhams. When I convert that to Ugandan money, that's about 8 million. So having worked for a year, I had the money on me. And since I wanted to change and get a better job, I paid up to Ali. The stocky man in this footage shot by a cell phone is Ali Sayed Abdul Jabba. In 2016, Jabba, who was based in Dubai, United Arab Emirates, posed as a hiring agent for a security firm. He allegedly conned about 30 girls of their funds. So I approached him, I told him, I'm like, Ali, uh, the offer you gave me, that's not Etisalat really. They're like, Etisalat offices can't even look like that. So I told him, I'm like, Ali, I need my money back. I don't want to hear anything else. I need my money back. So he opened the office. We entered inside. And um, when I started demanding for the money, he actually told me to get out of his office. If he finds the money, he will call me. I said, no, I'm not leaving without my money. So, and all the other girls and the boys that were outside came in, all demanding for their money. So he hit me. When I refused to move, he came out from behind the desk and came and hit me so badly. Then some girl was recording. She's called he Becky. Hit you on the face? Yeah, he hit me on the face. He was actually slapping and boxing. And then, like, being a guy, then I actually got, like, some bruises because his watch hit me, like, so bad. I, I got bruised up. I, I, I looked at Ali, the fact that I was demanding for my money, and then I was being but assaulted. It all didn't make sense. So um, he beat the other girl that was recording. He got her phone and threw it down. The screen shattered. And um, that time he went and closed the door of the office. Nalwoza says efforts to trace Ali Jaba in Dubai were futile. So I remember we went to the police station because uh, the other girl he hit and myself, the other girl's head was swollen, like her, her, her eye was swollen. And then for me, I had like, I was bleeding on my hand because when he hit me, like the watch sort of like um, put a wound. So we went to Al Baraha Hospital and they told us to open up a case against Ali. Then that time we went, um, of course they needed some money to, to, for the court case and all that. So we didn't have the money that time. And that's how, like, but the police kept looking for Ali. NTV has obtained videos of Jabba beating other women who are demanding a refund of their money. <laughs> Maria Namatovo, whose real name has been concealed for security reasons, was out of employment when a Ugandan lady linked her to Ali Abdu Jabba. With her last savings, she paid the equivalent of 2 million shillings to Ali Jabba to get a job in a security firm. She, she handed me over to Jabba. They told us the process and the procedure. We signed some documents with them. They told us within 18 days, the working visa would be out. We paid some money. How much? Um, what was the money for? The money was for, of course, they acted as middlemen. Yeah. This is an agent. The lady, Kaysa, is an agent. But she's Ugandan? Ugandan, yes. So, Ali is the middleman. 
Unfortunately, my visa was running out. I had to vacate before the 18 days erupted. So the 18 days erupted when I was already in Uganda. Namatovu returned to Dubai on a three-month visa. I tried to look for Ali. Good enough, I found him. When I found him, I found him in another office, a new office. Whereby still there were so many Ugandans, ladies, men and women and also other countries still and this is a new office not the other the first one and that's where I also met these other girls that were beaten badly some of the victims including Naluoza and Becky Nachibuka have petitioned the speaker of parliament Rebecca Kadaga over the activities of Jabba According to the letter authored on May 15, 2018, it reads, and I quote, It is our view that when you make interventions and apprehend those who participate and benefit from illegal and extortionist networks, the problem of Ugandans working abroad can be addressed. On May 1, 2017, I returned to his office and told him I was opting out and demanded a refund of my money. I met Betty Nachibuka and over 30 other girls from Uganda, but others from Nigeria, Kenya, Cameroon, and other countries. Madam Speaker, we wish to inform you that Mr. Ali Abdujaba beat us so badly that we sustained serious injuries. He then threw us out of his office. We both had to undergo treatment at our own cost since we didn't have health insurance. Ali had knives that he menacingly brandished at us, but the recordings were lost after he broke the mobile phone. Jabba later traveled to Uganda on a Yemen passport. While in the country, he received three passports, which NTV has seen. It's not clear yet how he received these passports after his nationality was contested at the Directorate of Citizenship and Migration. Many of Ali's victims, including Namatovu, came to learn that Jabba now lives in Uganda as an investor. And I'm like, really? Like this is someone who's been conning Ugandans off their money in Dubai, and now he's in Uganda as an investor? It all didn't make sense. But true, the truth was that Ali was here and he was trying to camouflage as an investor. But the truth is, while in Dubai, he was just conning people off their money and, you know, telling them how he has jobs, but he never would give them jobs and yet he would take their money. The victims who have failed a number of complaints with authorities claim law enforcement officials have sat by as spectators to a traversity of justice. To give out letters to the labor, we were told to go to the Interpol, we were told to go to internal affairs, to CPS. We tried all those means, but it's like Ali was nowhere again to be seen. Because we, we, we thought that they could come and get this man and we, maybe we face him, we confesses or he denies us. But we never saw Ali till today. When, while, while still in Dubai, I wrote a letter to the, to the speaker. And um, we, we were really... Because that time we'd seen that, I'd seen that he was in Uganda. And so I... I tried to reach out to the authorities in Uganda to alert them that this guy is actually not what he really says he is. Yet Jabba seems to always be a step ahead of law enforcement. His ability to charm his way through corridors of powers has handed him a license to go about undeterred. NTV has seen a letter authored and signed in the names of the Internal Affairs Minister, General J.J. Odong, which grants Ali Jabba leeway to undertake security roles. The letter reads, and I quote, Al Sayed Ali Abdu Jabba is a native Ugandan holding passport number B1597101. He works with the Office of the Minister of Internal Affairs on Security Matters. Please assist wherever and whenever he seeks your help. NB, if in doubt, contact the undersigned. General JJ Odong told NTV that he had earlier on ordered for the arrest of Jabba. On May 8, 2018, officers from the Department of Citizenship and Migration Control in Kampala arrested Ali Jabba for the possession of multiple passports.
and handed over to CMI on allegations that he was a terrorist and human trafficker. CMI cleared him after verifying all these allegations were not true, says Internal Affairs Minister General J.J. Odong, who met this journalist at his office on Friday 8th, February 2019. When prodded, the Internal Affairs Minister revealed what prompted him to author a letter which handed Ali a security role. And I quote, I have in the past served as an intelligence officer. One of the lessons I learned is that you need to bring those you are investigating closer to you, close quotes, said J.J. Dog. Ali's phone was either off or went unanswered on several occasions when we tried to contact him. But later on during the night of Friday 8th February, he turned up at the Serena Conference Center in Kampala at 9 p.m. but declined to give an interview, saying he needed to consult further. They're in court, battling, no sense. But the good thing, Emma, you've done the right procedure, you're following the right process. Mm. Me, I will give you the story from A to Z. Yeah. If you even channel. want, I can send you even on some WhatsApp, you start going through the story. Yeah. You, can, you can send on this number. Yeah. Trust me, because it has been a very long way whereby at the end of the day, they have to pay. Highly placed sources told NTV that officials at the ministry are reluctant to be sucked into the crosshairs of such a sensitive matter because Ali Jaba has a security assignment. An internal memo at the ministry, authored on 15th August 2018, reads, and I quote, Pending the retrieval of the hard copy file of the applicant, I was able to obtain printouts from the strong room of the subject's biodata pages. According to the data on the biodata pages of passports number B1567101 and B1364892 and B1238530, the subject's parents are stated as Abdul Jabba Al Sayed, born in Soroti, and the mother is stated as Fatum Hassan Okelo, born in Amuria. It reads further, however, without the original physical file of the subject, I cannot conclude that the parents are actually Ugandans. Yet there's more controversy about Ali Jabba's passports. In one of the passports, it's claimed that Ali Jabba was born in Soroti, and in another passport, it is claimed that he was born in Wakiso. Abdul Jabbar is born of Teso, the son of Teso, even married a woman who was also a mix from here, the first wife. She's settled in Jinja, she's called Fauzia Ali. And uh, I don't know what happened. He married again the second wife in Kampala, but also a mix of, I think, an Afghan and the Muganda. But the biggest family of Abdul Jabbar is in Bugiri. Uh, the, the father was called uh, uh, Abdul Jabbar. And the, the, there's a brother called uh, Abud. This Abud was killed during uh, the ambush in the, uh, the Kumi Road. He died, yes. Jabba faces other accusations and charges. On 30th August 2017, the director of Interpol, Eli Womaya, through his officer, Anthony Kawesigwa, issued a notice to his Tanzanian counterpart seeking Jabba alongside his accomplice over embezzlement. It is alleged that Jabba had fled to Tanzania to escape arrest. On 14th September 2017, another letter from the office of the Commandant Aviation Police Entebbe reveals that Jabba was wanted over the theft of company funds worth 150,000 US dollars. And I quote, Upon learning that they are wanted, the said people are believed to have intentions of fleeing the country. The purpose of the letter is to request you if seen, intercept, arrest, and inform for collection. Close quotes. Reads a letter authored by Dale Johnson, commander, CID Kampala Metropolitan Police. In December 2017, Ali Jabba was detained at Central Police Station on charges of theft of 50,000 US dollars. However, it's not clear yet why Jabba was released from jail. Many of Jabba's victims seek the day when justice will manifestly be delivered. In Uganda, police statistics indicate that at least 50 girls are trafficked every day, largely through porous border points heading for the Middle East. The authorities should do something really as fast as possible because he's doing this to so many other people. If he could do this to me while I was in Dubai, then I'm sure he did it, he's doing it to so many you know, innocent Ugandans. 
here. I'm going to search con men or con women, con, con ladies who again come to your country still to con others and they stay in your country and you're not helped at all. If you come out to say that such and such a person conned me, they tell you it, these things happened out of Uganda. The risky lifestyle of human trafficking is yet to recede from the public consciousness. Uganda is one of the greatest sources of victims for human trafficking, second to Vietnam. It is one of the most shocking statistics and it is very interesting that many of us don't know about human trafficking. Human trafficking entails child trafficking as well, as we have seen recently. Many Ugandan girls are sold into forced labor, domestic servitude or sexual slavery, where others commit suicide to escape this torment. Emmanuel Mutaizewa, NTV.